My name is Drew, uh, Drew Housen. I'm co-founder and CEO of a company called Dropbox. Um, kind of an engineer by training. I've uh, been involved in a bunch of startups since I was a little guy. Um, and uh, Dropbox is basically a really easy way to share files across computers and with other people. Um, we're a venture-backed startup in San Francisco. Um, been kind of a freemium model since the beginning, and um, it's worked very well for us. So we've, we, in, we launched back in September 2008, and since then um, have attracted uh, several million users and are rapidly, rapidly growing. Um, but that said, it's, it's a tricky thing, and we spend a lot of time making it work. Um, you can't just sort of slap a free version of your product out there and kind of hope for the best. Um, for us, uh, after a lot of tuning, we've, we've uh, kind of made the lines cross on the economics, and I'll sort of talk about the fundamentals of how that works. Um, and, but when it does work, it's great. And uh, what I want to emphasize is that it is a numbers game. So um, you know, bust out your Excel spreadsheets, and, and it's all about kind of finding all kinds of like wins along the margins and doing like lots of little things right more than you know one um, key thing. And uh, so a lot of the sort of you know benefits and challenges of freemium are, are pretty well documented, but um, thought it might be useful to sort of walk through the things that we did that were successful and the things we screwed up um, and sort of how we arrived at uh, some of our conclusions. Okay, so uh, we got start. We started the company back in 2007 and sort of fine-tuned and polished the products, kind of going from the coding and boxers phase to finally getting a real product out the door in about uh, a little more, maybe a year and a, a little under a year and a half. Um, and the basic business model is you get a you get a free account with two gigs of space, um, some percent. Or this is sort of my understanding of the business model when we launched it. We're like, okay, we know we want to have a free account. Uh, we know. You know, some people need more space because they tell us that, uh, even in the closed beta. And then, you know, like God help us, good things are going to happen. Um, so the, the good part about a business model is that, um, or about sort of, uh, or just the sort of good fundamental thing is people kind of understand that paying for storage is something that costs money. So uh, we both had the online backup guys kind of paving the way, and um, you know, most of those products are paid only. And people sort of intuitively understand that, okay, well, even if I don't use some kind of online service, I still have to go down to Best Buy, I still have to buy an external hard drive. This isn't, you know, um, something that I, can, that I can expect where I can get just large quantities of space for free. I mean, that may change over time, but at least that's the situation today. Um, and the downside is that we noticed sort of even in our closed beta was that, you know, gigabytes aren't necessarily the best measure of value that you get from Dropbox. And we had all kinds of people sort of using it for their, uh, for their stuff and, and having a great experience and you know, would be ready to pull out their credit card. But you know, even the most charitable Dropbox users probably not going to just pay us um, f you know, in, in, in if they won't actually use the space. Actually, some do. It's kind of surprising. Like a, large, a, a significant percent of our users buy Dropbox but don't actually exceed their free quota. But that's kind of a, another thing. Um, and you've probably all sort of seen, this is sort of the freemium, the essence of freemium in, in kind of a graphic form. You have your subscription revenue, uh, you have the cost, sort of your basic gross margins, you know, the cost it, it takes to serve a, an individual paid user, and sort of the fundamental uh, difference with freemium is that you also have, you know, typically some kind of low conversion rate, so, you know, single digit percent, and what you end up with is a ratio of, for every paid user, there are n free users, and for freemium to work, um, the, each paid user has to pay for n free riders. Um, so rewind back to September th 2008. Here we are. We just, uh, well, we, not only did we get on TechCrunch, but we launched at TechCrunch 50. Um, we're like, OK, it's probably time to buy some AdWords and like a PR firm or VP of marketing or just you know whatever startups do. And, um, Again, hope for the best. So, um, so we got started, right? We picked out all kinds of keywords. We hired someone um, on contract who is super well versed in this kind of thing and had done, you know, run huge uh, paid search inventories before, and had, you know, this just this, this whole black art of optimizing everything, and and off we went. Um, so the first thing we kind of encountered pretty quickly was that. 
Uh, most of the obvious keywords like online backup or online storage or you know you name it uh, are already super expensive. Like you know if not like large fractions of dollars per click, if not like multiple dollars per click um, for premium positioning and. You know, furthermore, is probably all the all of our competitors are venture, you know, spending their venture capital on that. So um, there wasn't a whole lot of wiggle room there. And uh, even you know, when we tried to do pick keywords that were more like sync related and things like that, they just they just weren't driving a ton of volume, at least not enough to move the needle compared to the sort of um, basic things we were doing. Um, and we also. Uh, you know, just getting someone to click on an ad is not, and there's also all kinds of breakage on the way to becoming a free user. Um, but the really big problem was that if you have like some cost, if, you, if you're paying like several dollars to acquire a free user, you know, it's not rocket science to realize that if, you know, at a like, you know, single digit, conver single digit percent conversion rate, that's a ratio of like tens of free users for each paid user. You know, we were at, like, it was kind of demoralizing after we started like running the experiment. It's like, okay, our cost per like, okay, search is working. People are like signing up. Uh, the problem is like our cost per like our effective cost per acquisition per user per paid user is like thousands of dollars for a hundred dollar product. So uh, this chart here, this little piece of negative margin is actually like not to scale. I guess I'll say. Um, so I won't spend too much time on sort of the numbers game aspect of this, although that's really what it's all about. Um, but there's sort of a fundamental rule of SaaS, right? Uh, a user's lifetime value has to be greater than a cost, or be more than it costs to acquire that customer. And sort of, um, as I explained a minute ago, that's, this is how it works in freemium. You have a paid customer, they got to pay for a bunch of free riders and for the cost of serving that customer. Um, this kind of gets glossed over because a lot of web businesses don't have, you know, it just doesn't cost that much to provision a user. But I'm sure in Pandora's case, streaming, licensing, um, all of these things uh, are, have ma like massive impacts on um, on your profitability. You know, because if every paid, if every subscriber has to pay for, you know, 50 free users, then uh, suddenly these hosting and support and licensing and other transactional or variable costs like add up a lot. Um, and I'll get, I'll get to this later, but the reason why it's a numbers game is because like, you know, a tenth of a percent in conversion rate or saving 10 cents for a cost for a free user per year or just any fluctuations in some of these really core constants have like just unbelievable impacts on your profitability. Um, and, you know, while you always try to improve them, if things sort of decline for some reason, you can go from, you know, doing well to like being wildly uh, negative margin. And so that's really the kind of hardest thing about freemium.